How's it going, people? <laughs> Doing fantastic. Ah, not that I wish ill of anybody in the world, but my religious neighbors on the other side of the wall just got kicked out. <laughs> Apparently, they were bothering too many people. Yeah, they were bothered by my making videos and my snoring. They told me I should do something about my snoring, but meanwhile, they were bothering everyone else. And I didn't even complain. <laughs> everyone else did. Anyway, I don't have to worry about anybody pounding on the other side of the wall for a little while, because there's nobody there. So, I thought I'd celebrate with a video and one of these. Besides, I, I didn't critique this last time. So, mm. I don't usually critique things, you know. Well, I don't usually critique beverages too much, but uh, let's see what I can uh, do to uh, appraise this one. My palate isn't much. You know, I'm, I'm easy to please. <sighs> you know, it's pretty smooth, creamy, not too hopped up. Um, goes down nice, unlike this. Yes, time for another section of the DNC. <sighs> I've been putting this off, but I gotta finish this book. And uh, we're up to section 104, and it looks like it runs on a bit. Oh boy, maybe I better get another beer. Yeah, very, very smooth. It's got a creamy, velvety quality. And yet, considering the price, I mean, basically just a, your standard tasting beer to me. Um, it was okay. Got a long masthead here, so let's plow into it. Revelation. Given to... Enoch, brackets, Joseph Smith the prophet, they're back to using their secret names, <laughs> April 23rd, 1834. Concerning the United Order, or the Order of the Church uh, for the Benefit of the Poor, the occasion was that of a council meeting of the First Presidency and other high priests in which the pressing temporal needs, that's reality needs, not spiritual, <laughs> of the people had been given consideration for explanation of unusual names Joey's got like four or five secret names. <sighs> C heading to section 78, which I've already covered and it was funny as shit. Um, some who had broken their covenants, that's got to hurt, um, in the United Order had come under condemnation. The Lord will not be mocked, except on my channel, <laughs> and some others. Um, care of the poor, an imperative duty of the saints. They're so saintly. It's for that Mountain Meadows Massacre episode. <sighs> the United Order in Kirtland was uh, segregated from that in Zion, hmm. Missouri. This separation partly because of transgression on the part of members and partly because of the scattered condition of the saints of Missouri. And that's where they were supposed to have their act together. Zion, the new chosen land. Things are going very wrong in Missouri. 
<sighs> a treasury for the order provided for on conditions of faith and humility. The Lord promises to deliver his people this once out of financial bondage. It's on his tab, huh? God's going to pay it off this time. Just wait for that check to clear. Hmm. Kind of light, smooth. I could probably slam a bunch of those real easy without noticing. Well, I'd notice, but <laughs> I mean, it's got a really easy palette. You know, not too strong, not too piney, and not too crazy about stuff overly hopped. My stepbrother and I disagree about that. Then again, he drinks warm beer. He's from Sweden. He's got this European thing going on. He's a world traveler. I'm a provincial California boy. I like it cold. And not too hoppy. One. Verily. I say unto you, my friends, I give unto you counsel and a commandment concerning all the properties which belong to the order which I commanded to be organized and established to be a united order and an everlasting order for the benefit of my church and for the salvation of men until I come to with promise immutable and unchangeable that inasmuch as those whom I commanded were faithful they should be blessed with a multiplicity of blessings. Three. But inasmuch as they were not faithful, it's always a catch, uh, they were nigh unto cursing. That close. So look out. Four. Therefore, inasmuch as some of my servants have not kept the commandments, but have broken the covenant through covetousness and with feigned words, I have cursed them with a very sore and grievous curse. Five. For I, the Lord, have decreed in my heart that inasmuch as any man belonging to the order shall be found a transgressor or in other words because they need other words don't they um, shall break the covenant which is a transgressor in other words, with which ye are bound, he shall be cursed in his life, and shall be trodden down by whom I will. Yeah, that sounds so violent. Trod down on somebody in their life? I thought vengeance was the Lord. Well, that's the Lord talking, and he's saying it's all right to trod them over. Trod them down. Okay. That explains the Mountain Meadows, Meadows Massacre. Six. For I, the Lord, am not to be mocked in these things. Specifically, I guess they're to come here. I, I'm do it anyway, okay? So trod me down. <laughs> Seven. And all this that... Innocent among you may not be condemned with the unjust. So, you know, the tares and the buds, or something like that. Um, the tender buds. <sighs> okay. And 
that the guilty among you may not escape. Because I, the Lord, have promised unto you a crown of glory at my right hand. That's going to be kind of crowded on his right. I mean, I can just see, you know, how lo <laughs> you ever been in tra rush hour traffic? See how many people there are just now? And we're talking about everybody who ever lived and was ever a, a believing Christian. That's a lot of people at his right hand. <sighs> okay. Eight. Therefore, inasmuch as you are found transgressors, you cannot escape my wrath in your lives. Unless you do. Um, nine. Inasmuch as ye are cut off for transgression, ye cannot escape the buffetings of Satan until the day of redemption. So, God, I mean, the righteous are after you, the unrighteous are after you, uh, the Lord's pissed at you, Satan's going to buffet you. Better be good, man, or else you just can't win. All right. And not good, excuse me, righteous. Being good ain't good enough. All right. Ten. And I now give unto you power from this very hour, it's official, that if any man among you of the order is found a transgressor and, and repenteth not of the evil, that ye shall deliver him over unto the buffetings of Satan. And he shall not have power to bring evil upon you. Eleven. It is wisdom in me, therefore, a commandment that I give unto you, that ye shall organize yourself and appoint every man his stewardship. That one almost didn't come out. Okay. Twelve. That every man may give an account unto me of the stewardship which is appointed unto him. Thirteen. For it is expedient that I, the Lord, should make every man accountable. Is it? Expedient. As a steward over earthly blessings, which I have made and prepared for my creatures. That's all you LDS folks and other Christians, I guess. Maybe. <sighs> it's a fascinating chapter here. Section, excuse me. think I need to get another beer. Okay. 14. I, the Lord, stretched out the heavens and built the earth. My very handiwork. So geocentric. And all things therein are mine. 15. And it is my purpose to provide for my saints for all things are mine. So God has a purpose, and it's to serve us while we're serving him. Well, not me, but I will have no part of that myself. Sounds too silly, even for me. All right, 16. But it must needs be done in mine own way or he'll take his ball and go home. And behold, this is the way that I, the Lord, have decreed to provide for my saints, that the poor shall be exalted. Did you tell Romney that? Because he doesn't care about the poor, he said. In that the rich are made low. Did somebody tell Romney this bit? I mean, tell him, hey, 
Dude, DNC section 104, verse 16. They're talking about you, Mitt. They're talking shit about Mitt. 17. For the earth is full and there is enough to spare. Sounds like socialism. Sounds like share the wealth. The fuck. Yea, I prepared all things and have given unto the children of men to be agents unto themselves. 18. Therefore, if any man shall take of the abundance which I have made and impart not his portion according to the law of my gospel unto the poor and the needy, he shall with the wicked lift up his eyes in hell, being in torment. Yeah, but what would Ayn Rand say about that? Because, you know, we got these Ayn Randian Christians. <laughs> I'm sure that she would, if she were aware, would be spinning in her <laughs> anti-theistic grave <laughs> to find out all these fundy Christians love her. <laughs> the woman who said that Christianity is stupid. And altruism is for fools. And basically, don't take my shit. Fuck you. The virtue of selfishness. And this sounds like socialism. This is, wow. 19. And now verily I say unto you concerning the properties of the order. 20. Let my servant, uh, Pelagoram, uh, in brackets, that's Sidney Rigdon, his secret name, have appointed unto him the place where he now resides. Lucky him. Doesn't have to change anything. And the lot of the Hannes, <coughs> the tannery. It's like they're in the, their own little world there. Their own little argot. In their own special sacred monikers. Okay. For his stewardship, for his support while he is laboring in my vineyard, which is just, you know, metaphorical. They don't really have a vineyard. It just means church. Uh, even as I will, when I shall command him. 21. And let all things be done according to the counsel of the order, and united consent or voice of the order, which dwell in the land of Shinha, which is, in brackets, Kirtland, Ohio. 22. And this stewardship and blessing... I, the Lord, confer upon my servant uh, Pelagoram, Sidney Rigdon. <laughs> they keep explaining it. Uh, for a blessing upon him and his seed after him. 23. And I will multiply blessings upon him inasmuch as he will be humble before me. 24. And again, let my servant... Uh, Mahemson, that's Martin Harris in brackets, have appointed unto him for his stewardship the lot of land which my servant Zomb Zombri, and that's John Johnson in brackets, <laughs> obtained in exchange for his former inheritance. They're switching up now, they're trading uh, for him and his seed after him. <laughs> Sombre. <laughs> um, 25. And inasmuch as he is faithful, <laughs> I will multiply blessings upon him and a seed after him. They needed a verse for that. 26. And let my servant Ma Him Son, and that's Martin Harris again, in case you've already forgotten. 
devote his monies for the proclaiming of my words, according to my servant, Gazalam. Guess who that is? It's, it's Enoch. I mean, Joseph Smith, Jr. Gazalam is another one of his names. He's got quite a few. <sighs> Shall direct those words that God is saying through Joey Jr., his voice box, his mouthpiece. 27. And again, let my servant uh, Shedder Lomack, and that's Frederick, Frederick G. Williams in brackets, have the place upon which he now dwells. So they're being pretty accommodating, you know. Just keep what you got for now. 28. And let my servant, Onaiha, and that's Oliver Cowdery in brackets, have the lot which is set off joining the house, which is to be for the Lane Shine House, printing office in brackets, in case you didn't know what Lane Shine means. <sighs> it's so s I feel like I'm privileged to inside information here. Okay, which is lot number one, and also the lot upon which his father resides. No secret name given. 29. And let my servants, uh, Shitter Lomack, and in brackets that's Frederick G. Williams, and Onaiha, in brackets that's Oliver Cowdery, because we might have forgotten already, have the Lane Shine House printing office in brackets, and all things that pertain to it. So, not interesting. I know, not really. 30. And this shall be their stewardship, which shall be appointed unto them. 31. And inasmuch as they are faithful, behold, I will bless and multiply blessings upon them. 32. And this is the blessing of the stewardship which I have appointed them, which I uh, for them and their seed after them. 33. And inasmuch as they are faithful, I will multiply blessings upon them and their seed after them, even a multiplicity of blessings. Okay. The pain. That's why I'm not doing these very often. Sometimes it's really good, though. I need another beer, just to make it through this section. 34. And again, let my servant Zombri, and that's John Johnson in brackets, for those who are, have short-term memory problems, and even I'm not that bad, have the house in which he lives. So it needed to be stated. Because it didn't go without saying he might have had to move or something. And the inheritance all save the ground, which is to be reserved for the building of my house. And that's Joey's, not God's. Well, same thing. <laughs> which pertains to that inheritance. And those lots which have been named for my servant, Onaiha. Oliver Cowdery, in brackets. 35. And inasmuch as he is faithful, I will... Multiply blessings upon him also. 36. And it is my will that he should sell the lots that are laid off for the building of up of the city of my saints. Inasmuch as it shall be made known to him by the voice of the Spirit, and according to the counsel of the order and the voice of the order. <coughs> I 
I need another beer to be continued. Verse 37. Sorry about this. I know it sucks to be continued. I don't blame you if you don't come back. I gotta do this, though. OCD thing.